Our earth is still dying. The inhumane conflict in Yemen rages on. India's farmer protests and COVID crisis is still ongoing. Yet these extremely important issues don't seem to make our headlines anymore. Right now, it's all about Israel and Palestine. I scrolled through every single Instagram story on my feed last night and counted 11 that were about socio-political issues unrelated to Palestine and Israel. And this is how many Instagram stories I encountered that were about the Palestine-Israel conflict. I did not count them all. I lost track. There were just so, so many. What I'm saying is not to delegitimize the huge importance and relevance of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict right now. Obviously, because the bombing of Gaza has happened so recently, it's understandably very fresh in our minds and hearts. But because everyone is expected to care about whatever the hot social issue is, other issues get pushed to the side that are still ongoing and are still awful. This raises the important question of who gets to decide what is relevant? Who gets to decide the popularity of these socio-political issues? This question itself makes me feel uncomfortable because it feels as though these really important issues that people's lives and integrity often depend on are part of some trend cycle. I couldn't find an existing term to describe this, so I'm going to call it the social justice trend cycle in this video. Most awareness nowadays starts on social media, and while there are thousands of posts and tweets every second, it seems that the ones that stand out and eventually become the popular issue are the ones that are most jarring to us. This relies heavily on context, media, and those in power. For instance, last week in Kabul, Afghanistan, 68 schoolgirls were killed in a bombing and many more injured. This is a tragedy. And like the Palestine bombings, the Kabul school attack is part of a long, complex history and tension between two groups. Yet when I searched up Kabul or Afghanistan on Twitter, there was considerably less content compared to tweets about Palestine or Israel. The top tweets for a hashtag Kabul school attack usually only had a small number of likes and retweets with a few in the thousands. Whereas for a hashtag Palestine, hashtag Palestine bleeding and hashtag Israeli terrorist, there were hundreds and hundreds of tweets with thousands of likes and engagement. In fact, if you type Afghanistan into the search bar, one of the top search results is still Palestine related. I'm not trying to say one catastrophe is more important than the other. I'm trying to point out a clear discrepancy using this example. Like I mentioned earlier, I think the reasons for this discrepancy are media, context, and those in power. Because the Palestine bombings happened during Ramadan, I think that made this tragedy more shocking and painful than it would have if it hadn't happened during the holy month. Also, whether there is live footage of an event affects how hard-hitting that event is. We have live footage of the Gaza bombings, of Israelis beating up Palestinians, and so these videos provide disturbing visuals that, in a way, make these events feel real to us. I think it's also why the death of George Floyd enraged so many people. Many black men have died at the hands of police officers before, but when we have this video of a police officer standing on George Floyd's neck, we become immersed in that scene and start to feel truly connected to what's going on. There were no live videos of the Kabul school bombing. The most circulated video were some men placing flowers on the desks of the girls who had died. And while it makes us feel sad, there's nothing graphic or explicitly horrific to spark those intense emotions. News sources and journalists immediately pick up on which stories are garnering the most attention, and so they start to create more content about those stories in a race to get more clicks and beat out their competitors. This creates a self-reinforcing loop where the media covers one story more, and so we, the general public, hear more about that one story. The more we hear about that one story, the more salient it becomes in our everyday lives and our own minds. So people end up posting more about that one story, the media sees that the public is posting more about it, and so they increase their content even more. It just goes round and round until something new comes along to horrify us. 
Also, this is just a theory of mine, but it's based on the observation that news and journalists love to bash politicians because most people have a problem with politicians, so they know that the public is probably going to like it. And they also like to include the US or China because they're both perceived as the big bad superpowers. So if news journalists criticize politicians from the US or China, then they probably know that they're going to get more engagement, which means more cha-ching. Well, the US has a history of being pro-Israel, and Biden recently said that he believes Israel has a right to defend themselves. News sources immediately picked up on this, and there are tons of articles about it, which has understandably gotten a lot of people angry at Biden, and thus has increased the number of social media posts about the Palestine bombings. In comparison, last month Biden actually ordered for all US troops to evacuate Afghanistan by September, which means for the Kabul school attack, the news can't paint the US government as much of a horrible actor as they could have before, which in turn means less opportunities for people to increase their outrage about it, at least from the American perspective. What all of this results in is a lot of performative activism. It's a widely known term, but just in case there's someone who's unaware of what it means, performative activism is acting in support of some cause or movement, but for the purpose of getting praised for it or just fitting in. People commonly point to social media activism for an example, you know, things like reposting Instagram infographics, tweeting hashtags, and Blackout Tuesday. People just click a few buttons and and suddenly they're a certified activist. People aren't invested in these causes once they're off their phones or their laptops. When we only think about the issues that are getting a lot of news coverage and have graphic videos to look at, that means as soon as the media industry hops onto the next social justice trend and there's less disturbing videos to watch at to make us feel bad about it, the issue becomes forgotten. But that's so problematic because issues continue long after you post a black square on your Instagram. For example, during the summer, Diane Sims opened the only black-owned bookstore in Minnesota called Black Garnet. And since this was during the height of the Black Lives Matter movement, she received a lot of monetary support. Over 100k was raised in just a GoFundMe alone. But in an article with TPT Originals, Diane Sims talks about how months after BLM had faded, people started to be upset that her three-month-old bookstore couldn't fulfill orders as quickly as Amazon. They would write emails like, Why is this taking so long? We really wanted to support you. I also think it's bad to expect everyone to be deeply invested in every single hot issue because one, it's unrealistic, and two, it negatively impacts the quality of activism. There are so many socio-political problems in the world that nobody can approach them all with the same urgency and care. It's impossible to fight for better environmental laws while also lobbying for indigenous treaty rights, and on top of that, learning about the housing market, the US-China tensions, the Middle Eastern conflicts. The only way that you can care equally about all of these hot topics is if your care is very surface level. And I'd much rather have people like Greta Thunberg, who doesn't speak much about stop Asian hate or trans rights, but her devotion to climate change is genuine, dedicated, and impactful. Quality over quantity. The pressure to be woke and post about the current trending social justice problem causes activism to turn into a shedding of self-guilt rather than a way to change what's actually going on and to truly take time to learn about the complexities of each issue. I disagree with people who say things like, you don't need to know anything to take a stance, murder is murder, there's clearly an obvious side to be on, as if there's ever some clear obvious answer to dealing with these types of problems. I can't remember which city it was in, but during the height of BLM, there were some allies who wanted to protest to show their support for the movement, which seems like an admirable thing to do. But because they were not carefully educated about the inner workings of the specific community that they were protesting in, what happened was that their protests with good intentions actually led to increased police surveillance in the community that they were protesting in. 
They only harmed the residents even more, even though they were trying to help. There's an extremely interesting article called Stop Trying to Save the World that I highly recommend everyone read. It really illustrates how many situations may seem to have some obvious correct answer, but because societies are a complex ecosystem, a lot of times when we interfere, there are lots of unexpected consequences. But that's the problem with performative activism and treating social justice as a trend cycle. People don't care about the real consequences. People just want want an easy answer and to feel like they've done something. When people are so eager to jump on the social justice trend of the week, and what they care about is just whatever is popular, we become so prone to consuming misinformation because the goal is not to learn anymore, it's to feel like I've done some good and to repost. Trends come and go, but social justice should be sustained. Find an issue or cause that you truly care about, and so you'll continue to care about it long after it's stepped out of the limelight. I don't want social justice to become some trend cycle. I want issues people speak about and post about to mean something. Personally, I don't repost any infographics unless it's something I genuinely care about and am educated on. The awareness that social media can bring is amazing. But social media is not the end point. I hope people, including myself, are more mindful of the activism they take on and are aware of how trendy social justice has become. I know this video can be a bit controversial, so please let me know what you thought down below. If you found me bearable, you can like and subscribe, and I hope to hear from you soon. I really want to hear your thoughts. Bye!